Hi, I'm Darnay. And I'm Marie. And this is the MD, MD History, History Channel. Channel. In today's show, we will be talking about Chapter 14. About the New Industrial Age. Enjoy! In Section 1, we learn how the industry expands due to abundance in natural resources. Actually, 60 years after the Civil War, the United States became the leading industrial power in the world. Wow. What was the main resource being found and used at that time, Darnay? Well, black gold was um, found and Canadian geologist Abraham Jessner discovered how to get the fuel from oil to coal. Um, 80, in the 1840s, the Americans began using kerosene to light their lamps. Oh, that's right. Now, do you know the first person that actually drilled oil? Yes, actually, um, Edwin L. Drake. He began to use the steam engine to drill for oil near Titusville, uh, Pennsylvania in 1859. And petroleum refining industries arose in Cleveland and Pittsburgh, and entrepreneurs rushed to change the oil into kerosene. The gasoline byproduct of the re refining process was originally useless until the automobile became popular. Wow, times surely have changed. <laughs> yeah. Other than oil, what other resources were being found at this time? Well, the United States was an abundant land of other resources like um, coal and iron deposits. Iron ore deposits were discovered along the Misabi Range of Minnesota, 100 miles long and up to 3 miles wide. At the same time, coal production skyrocketed from 33 million tons in 1870 to more than 250 million tons in the 1900. Steel must have been used um, for something very great in America. Yes, actually steel initiated many new products and some of these products were um, the, well the railroads were one of the biggest customers for steel. Also inventors found additional uses for it. Joseph Glidden's barbed wire and also McCormick's and Deere's farm machines um, which this helped transform the plains into the food producer of the nation. Um, innovation construction was made possible and uh, the steel helped build the Brooklyn Bridge and also William Le Baron Jenny designed the first skyscraper with a steel frame. So Darnay, can you tell me who Thomas Edison was and what his contribution was? Mm -hmm. So Thomas Edison, um, in 1876, he established the world's first research uh, laboratory in Menlo Park, New Jersey. And there he perfected the incandescent light bulb, patent in 1880. Um, the electricity um, changed the nature of business in America. It uh, ran numerous machines and it was able um, available in homes which led to time-saving appliances. It ran electric streetcars and it um, promoted the outward spread of cities and it allowed manufacturers to locate their plants other than just near rivers. In section two, how did the railroad uh, create a reliable local transit and support for the westward expansion? Well, first of all, the government, in order to support westward expansion, made huge land grants and loans um, for the railroad industries. Um, they also created a national network through the railroads because people were able to draw, travel from coast to coast and move their lives to the west coast. Um, furthermore, the railroads extended to the Mississippi in 1856 and in 1859 they crossed the Missouri. The Transcontinental Railroad was built or was completed in May 10, 1869, and this connected the East and West Coast. So how did uh, the railroad create a positive effect for the civilian life? Um, people, since there was now a way of transportation to move from coast to coast, there were more um, possible opportunities for the people, and railroads gave many Americans the chance for a fresh start. Um, but this was only possible through the harsh lives of the railroad workers, where there were a lot of downfalls. Um, Chinese immigrants, Irish immigrants, and Civil War veterans often worked on the railroads, and they were affected by the harsh um, treatment of the railroad um, 
bosses and a lot of them died from injuries and the, it was very dangerous to be working on these railroads. Accidents and diseases injured and killed many employees of the railroad. Um, 2,000 employees were killed and 20,000 were injured um, in the first couple years of the railroad industry. Okay, so as the railroad started to, to expand, how did the time zones affect this? Um, well, since traveling from one coast to another obviously changes your time zone, the um, traveling industry or the railroad industry decided that um, there needed to be a railroad time. Actually, the person who created the 24-hour time zones was Professor C.F. Dowd, who decided that um, the world needed to be split into time zones so that travelers wouldn't have to change their watches so many times when traveling from coast to coast. So on November 18th, 1883, all watches were synchronized to the official railroad time, but the government did not adopt the railroad time until 1918. So moving on to our next question, how did the railroad help with the economy? Um, the railroads made the right chance for opportunities for the citizens, and as they moved out westward, there were more chances for steel, coal, lumber, and glass industries to be made. Um, businesses shot up all over westward towns. Um, in cities such as Albany, Kansas, Flagstaff, Arizona, Denver, Colorado, and Seattle, Washington, um, they all owed their success to the railroad industry. So, what was George M. Pullman's stance in the railroad? Um, George M. Pullman actually built a factory for manufacturing sleepers and other railroad cars of the Illinois Prairie. Um, Pullman also built a town for his employees, much like the textile mills, and had boarding houses. And how did Richard Ole um, affect Pullman's town? Richard Ole believed that the town of Pullman was firmly under company control. Um, and due to his critiques on Pullman's town, it eventually led to um, Pullman cutting wages and this led to violent strikes in 1894. All right, so what was the Credit Mobiler? The Credit Mobiler was a construction company formed in 1864 by owners of the Union Pacific Railroad, um, who used it to fraudulently skim off railroad profits for themselves. The officers had taken up to 23 million in stocks, bonds, and cash. This scam was eventually exposed, and it ruined the reputation of the Republican Party. So moving on to the Grangers, how, who were they and how did they feel about the railroad? Um, the Grangers were actually upset farmers. Um, they, they thought that the railroad system was corrupt, and they were against like the making of the railroads due to like the lack of government um, ideals like put into it. Um, the mostly, though, they were upset with the railroad's misuse of the government land grants. Um, they believed that fixing prices, which kept farmers in debt, was one of the railroad's main goals, and they charged different customers different rates, which was unfair to the farmers because they were the minority in this situation. Um, so then they came up with Granger Laws, which were political actions taken to protect their interests. In 1871, Illinois uh, authorized to establish maximum freight and passenger rates and prohibit discrimination. Um, the railroad f fought back with the Munn versus Illinois um, Supreme Court case, which upheld the right of government to regulate private industry to serve the public interest. So overall, the Grangers did win when they were fighting with the railroad. Well, thank you, Marie, for your such thorough answers. Moving on to the Interstate Commerce Act, what was this? Um, in 1886, the Supreme Court ruled that a state could not decide the rates of their interstate commerce. Um, the ICA, or the Interstate Commerce Act, reestablished the federal government's right to supervise railroad activities and create a five-member Interstate Commerce Commission to do so. This Interstate Commerce Commission was also known as the ICC and did not gain power until Theodore Roosevelt was president. So how did the railroad expansion turn chaotic? 
Um, well, due to the mismanagement, overbuilding, and corporate abuse, many railroads were um, faced with bankruptcy. And this also was due to the Panic of 1893, which was the worst depression of that time. Um, 600 banks and 15,000 businesses had failed, and by 1894, 4 million people had lost their jobs. Could you please tell me who um, Carnegie is and what his strategies were? Okay, so Andrew Carnegie was a man who came from Scotland at the age of 12 in 1848. He created his um, steel company in 1899 and he had very many business strategies mm -hmm. and which included his accounting system which made him able to track precise prices in his company. Wow, very cool. Um, could you explain to me how vertical integration and horizontal integration tie into Carnegie's strategies? Okay, so Carnegie's uh, company started to produce more steel than all the other companies put together and the vertical integration is when he bought out his suppliers in the iron mines and the ore freights and whatnot, and that created a vertical integration for him where he gained. Nice, very cool. And then the horizontal integration comes in when? Mm -hmm. So horizontal integration is where the smaller businesses started to uh, join together so that they wouldn't go out of business. Social Darwinism is a economic and social philosophy based on Charles Darwin's uh, evo theory of evolution by natural selection. So, how did um, the society begin to advance? Well, the society as a whole began to advance after the Civil War because uh, 4,000 millionaires had emerged out of this after the Civil War was over. How was the successful boom affecting the Protestants? Well, this um, appealed to the Protestants because it supported the work ethic of the notion of individual responsibility. So, could you please explain to me who Rockefeller was? So, Rockefeller was one of those who became in power in a short period of time. Mm -hmm. Rockefeller created the Standard Oil Company. Um, he reaped a lot of benefits from this because he paid his workers very low wages so that mm -hmm. he could sell his oil for low prices. Mm -hmm. And so he made his uh, competitors go out of business because of this. And within a decade, he owned 90% of the uh, refining oil uh, industry. So could you explain to me how Rockefeller was associated with the robber barons? So Rockefeller was associated with the robber barons because of the way the critics thought that he had manipulated the system and that um, the way he stomped out all of his competitors and that he joined in illegal trusts. All right, very good. And then is that what led to the Sherman's Act? Yes, the Sherman's Antitrust Act actually led them to it making them uh, illegal because they made it illegal for them to join trusts that interfered with free trade between states and other countries. So due to these successes, how was the nation both expanding and consolidating? So the nation was expanding in space and the size of the industry and they were consolidating with fewer in power because the certain companies became very big. Could you explain to me the divergence between the North and the South after the Civil War? Okay, so as the North was booming in industry, they owned 90% of stock in this industry for the railroads and the South remained mostly dominant um, in agriculture and farming after the Civil War because they couldn't get out of their economic deficit. Um, they also suffered from very high transportation and high tariffs. Did the unions arise within the businesses? Well, actually, these workers were in very dangerous employment areas. Um, in the steel mills, um, de it demanded a seven-day work week. Um, they worked 12 or more hours and did not have any vacations. They could not leave if they were sick, and they had no reimbursement for injuries. Injuries were very common. They worked in dirty and poorly ventilated factories. Workers had to perform uh, repetitive, mind-dulling tasks, and sometimes with dangerous equipment and machines. 
Um, during this period of time, the number of women doubled from 4 million to 8 million women working. 10% uh, were girls under 15 and some as young as 5 years old. Um, workers formed small local unions. Uh, this is why the unions emerged mm -hmm. and they felt that because the larger businesses were um, merging and they were consolidating, they felt that they needed the same kind of uh, protection. Most definitely. I'm glad America took a stand. <laughs> so what were the differences in the unions being formed? Well, the difference in the unions being formed were there were different unions for different types of um, skills. Um, the crack unionism included skilled workers for uh, from one or more trades. Immigrant Samuel Gompers led the cigar makers in for National Union to join the craft union. AFL, Gompers focused on collective bargaining or negotiation between labor management, and the IWW, or the Wobblies, was an organization by unionists and socialists of Chicago. The National Labor Union was um, founded in 1866 by William H. Silvis. Due to those dangerous conditions, I can definitely tell why so many strikes would happen. Could you give me the three most important ones? Yes, actually one of the first ones that I'll talk about is the Great Strike of 1877. Um, this strike was the strike that um, markers for the Baltimore and Ohio Railroad struck a protest because of their second wage cut in two months. The second was is the Haymarket Affair. Uh, it continued a form of strike strikes workers wanted to push for a change and also the Pullman Company strike where Pullman laid off 3,000 of, of his 5,800 workers. Um, he cut wages by 25% and cause them to take home less than six dollars a week. So in a time of much change, there must have been also a change in who was working where and what businesses were hiring who. And um, were there any women that were actually involved in organizations during this time? Yes, actually one of them is Mary Harris Jones. She um, supported the Great Strike of 1877. One of the other important things that she did was she led 80 mill children to President Theodore Roosevelt's doorstep and these children consisted of many hideous injuries and this caused the public to no longer ignore the fact that these children were being treated this way and came out of the factories with these hideous injuries. Mm -hmm. One of the other things Mary Harris Jones did was she um, influenced the passage of child labor laws. Um, the ILGW won the labor agreements and the public could no longer ignore conditions in garment factories after a fire broke out. This fire um, caused people not to escape and because they locked the doors um, preventing theft and so there was only one exit and many people died in this fire. So that's it for the new industrial age. Thank you for tuning in to the MD History Channel. See you next time. Bye. Bye. <laughs> oh, that well, was you so could good. It you could have held that together. <laughs> well, I'm glad America took a stand. Damn, that was good. God, that would have been a good Damn. ending part if you didn't like interrupt my America took a stand thing, dude. You a like rain to some blah blah. Hey, I don't know what you're telling what? me. <laughs> Darwin. Charles Darwin. Okay. Social. Social. Darwinism. Darwinism. <laughs> so Charles Darwinism.